Well, I guess we'll start now with officially taking this system apart. When I booted it, it sounded and felt like the power supply fan might not have been working. I didn't really hear the power supply fan. So, I guess we'll crack into this thing one more time and see what's on the inside. When I opened it up in the scrap yard on my original short, I didn't look at the individual components too carefully. Like, I am not sure what that video card is. The old Gateway 2000 literature says that it is a two megabyte PCI video card. That doesn't tell me anything. And the outside of the case comes off with no issues. Put that on the ground. I'm not 100% enamored with this power supply. And it's only a 145 watt power supply, but I didn't see if this fan was actually working. You know, I'm gonna plug it in one more time and turn it on, because I could not tell if this power supply was working, this uh, fan was working or not. Well, it is. It sounds like heck. And it looks like it's just screwed on to the actual power supply, but it is working. The fan, hard drive, cage, no hard drive. They did strip out the hard drive. According to Gateway, this is an 8X CD-ROM. And we have 64 megs of RAM. We've got an Intel, let's see, it's an FX chipset. And let's see, uh, it's filthy inside. Can you see that? It's a uh, Vera, yuck. Very filthy inside. Blah, 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 blah. All right. Video card. What are you? It looks like a Matrox Mystique. Oop, I unscrewed the network card. Yeah, there's a network card in here. This thing came fully loaded from Gateway. This is a 530TX, is that a Realtek? It looks like a, uh, that's a D-Link, excuse me. D-Link network card. I don't know if it's 10100. Interesting choice for the network card above the video card in the PCI slots. But network cards can be fussy. And this is a Matrox. It looks like a, might be a four meg card. Mystique looks like two megabyte. Matrox Mystique, two megabyte video card. And the sound card, which is connected to the CD-ROM drive, and is connected to the modem, that modem is coming out. The uh, sound card is a, disconnect you from the modem, and disconnect you from the, the CD-ROM drive. 
My goal is to keep this system pretty original. You are an ISA. What are you? You are an Insonic. You're an Insonic. Nice vintage ISA card. So, filthy as hell, but in good condition. Sound card. And this modem is most likely never coming back to live here. It has been kicked out of the house permanently. This is a gateway telepath modem. Telepath 33. So it's a US Robotics 33.6 modem. And there we go. It looks like it did voicemail or something like that. It is gateway branded. So, you know, we'll throw it in the bin of items that we're never going to use again. Got the memory. Got the motherboard, got the CPU. I think this bad boy just needs a lot of cleaning. I think that's all it really needs. And I think I, I will take a picture of how all these connectors go. And then we'll get the motherboard out, clean it off, clean the memory, and um, just take a closer look at things. We'll come back after further disassembly. Well, we've got her stripped down. We've got the front of the case here. And this little insert came off as a separate piece. I may try some retro bright on this. It's pretty beige. It's also pretty brittle because taking this panel out broke a couple of these, but I can hot glue this back into place. This unit will never have more than a CD-ROM drive and a floppy drive. I'll have to be super careful taking the rest of this apart. We have the drives out. We have the floppy and the CD-ROM. Again, the drive cage, again, the cards. Putting this over here. If I drop that on the floor, it would shatter. We've got the case stripped bare. Took the power supply out too. We'll get to that in a second. Um, I took the back panel of the case off. There's some rust and everything on there. I've got some brass, so I'll get some rust cleaner on that. Get that taken care of. The actual Power supply, as I mentioned before, it's only 145 watt. It's got a fan on there. I'm probably going to swap it out with an old 300 watt that I've got. It'll, it'll fit in there just fine. I like the upper drive bay. I guess this system could have been used as a, um, as a server also. I know a lot of Pentium Pros. I remember when I was in the Army, a lot of the Pentium Pros were used as Unix servers in the military. And I would assume with other entities also so we've got a drive bay up there got the drive base here speaker wiring and dirty as heck and like i said it did come with a hard drive it came with a uh just the cutest little just the cutest little teeny weeny <laughs> ide cable um i guess that's really all you need to go from here to here right that's it it's a short jump. Um, I guess the next stop would be getting this bad boy cleaned up. Oh yeah, here's some example of how brittle it is in here. Um, this actually broke off and the screw's still in it. This little peg here, which would be part of the actual, it broke off right from there. So you can see we've got the rest of them and this one broke off. So I just have to be careful from here on that I don't break any other pieces. And then finally, we've got the motherboard, which looks to be in really good condition. I mean, it booted, obviously. Thank goodness it has a lithium battery. It's PCI loaded with RAM. We'll check out the CPU and the paste under there and we'll just get it generally cleaned up and the biggest thing of course like I said will be 
too retro bright or not too retro bright the front panel um, I'm probably gonna post the strip down of this unit I welcome any thoughts as to whether or not I should attempt to retro bright this or should I leave it super beige let me know in the comments